In today's video, we are going to take a closer look at the ReefBot Lab. We are also going to compare and contrast it to the Neptune Systems Trident and uncover how I integrated this into my system. Let's get to it. <laughs> Alright, so here's a quick look at my water box. And when I was originally going to be hooking up the ReefBot Lab, I have room to put it into the cabinet over here. And I had also considered getting a separate stand to put here or here. But looking at my system, I thought there would be a better way because I have a water mixing station in my basement. So these RODI lines that run through here actually run through the wall and go downstairs to my mixing station. So I'm able to take advantage of automatic water changes. And I didn't want to put the reef butt lab here in my cabinet because I've already got plenty of things under here and the amount of room that I already have in there, it's like perfect. So I got the thinking. I'm back in my basement now and I have come up with a method that I think will be a much better solution in terms of running the ReefBot Lab. So a little background on the ReefBot Lab. I have been running this device now for probably six or seven months and it has been very, very reliable for me. I ran it first on my 150 gallon reef tank and before running the ReefBot Lab, I was actually running the Neptune Systems Trident. The Trident was actually a pretty reliable device for the first couple of years of running it. Didn't really have too many issues out of it just minor ones here and there some were user error some were device errors once it got around to the two and a half three year mark it just it's not a reliable device anymore am i so i've tried doing maintenance on it i have tried doing the trident service kit on it it has been shipped back and forth to neptune systems a couple of times them reporting that there's nothing wrong with it just for me to get it back and still continue having an issue now let's take a look at what the reefbot lab offers you all right so the reefbot lab offers a different approach to testing and it can also actually do more than what the neptune's trident can do so this is actually its own independent controller it doesn't require a an apex to run it it actually comes with a raspberry pi zero built into the system up here and then you have 12 different vials that you can use for testing now this thing supports pretty much all of your standard third-party test kits so if you use Salifert, API, Red Sea, Tropic Marin, this machine will more than likely be able to do it. Just make sure you check the documentation on their website before you try to add it. So originally on the 150 gallon, I was doing a calcium and KH test and I believe that those were all API. I was using Tropic Marin for their ammonia test and then I was using in Red Sea for nitrates. This time around I'm going to use all Red Sea test kits when connecting it to the Waterbox Refill X. And what really makes this machine different from Neptune is this device, it has three lines that come into it. One is for your tank sample, one is for your RODI, and one is waste. Now what this RODI line does is it, it actually uses this to clean out the system once the test is complete. Whereas if we look at the Trident, the Trident has two lines. It has a waste and it has a supply line. That is it. And I think this is the main reason why Neptune systems required four tests per day and you didn't have the ability to really control the scheduling. Now, with the ReefBot Lab, when it's connected, you tell it one to. You can perform as many tests a day as you like. To me, I think four tests a day is crazy. Um, I don't need that kind of accuracy with my testing. But what I do need is testing at least, for me, once a week. Here is the ReefBot Lab. It is currently performing a test 
the way I ended up integrating this into my system is from the outer water changing lines that are upstairs. Those travel from the tank, make its way over here, and come and integrates into these dosing pumps here. So with my old water right here, instead of just dumping it like I used to, I change the direction of it to where it goes through a, a cleaning filter here, and then it gets fed into this reservoir right here. And the advantage of doing this is a couple of things. Since the filter cleans the water before it hits the reservoir, the reservoir has lines here on the side to where I'm able to tell how much water I change out daily. And I have to have put a light at the top of it, but you can see once the light is applied, how much uh, fluid is inside the container. Once that container is filled, the ReefBot pulls its supply up through here. And as you can see, we have no air bubbles in the line. And I'm able to run the test that I need daily. But right now, the way the GHL Proflux is programmed is my water change will start at 7 a.m. Eastern Time. And it typically wraps up about 8, 8.30 Eastern Time. And then since it starts at that time, I also have an RODI solenoid here that actually opens up and drains this fluid out before the next water change. It takes about 10 minutes for it to gravity feed itself out. So far, for the last few days, it has been working pretty darn well. Judging by the ReefBot status light, it looks like it just finished a test. And... Right here is the email you will receive after a test. If we zoom in, we can see that my KH results returned at 7.6 DKH. Now to me that is expected. I use Tropic Marin Pro Salt, which normally has a DKH value of around 7.0 once it's mixed. And also on my ReefBot Lab, I bought a cheap little round table so I'm able to spin this thing around. Now I do have to be mindful of the lines, but this gives me 360 degree rotation. So that way I'm able to work with the system right here. And I don't have to be bouncing around my cabinet here, trying to pull these panels off to refill my reagents. And then also on my sample reservoir, I designed and 3D printed a base that lifts this reservoir up about five degree angle so that way I can take advantage of gravity uh, draining this. I also took the time and labeled what's in each compartment. So this right here would be where reagents 11 and 12 would be. Whereas if I spin it here, we can see that the test, the sample and the RODI is here. And then if I spin it around even more, I can see that reagents one and two are in here. And then if I spin it around even more, we can get a pretty good view into what's going on up here. So this will be, this is the part that goes to the tank. This is the RODI line. And this is what is used for backwashing and cleaning the system. And then it also is used for some of the tests as well that would require like an RODI sample to be used with that particular test. And my RODI line is plumbed directly into my reservoir right here and then the last part we have is waste the waste is actually plumbed from there and it runs into my waistline right back there to where it is then rerouted over to a hole in the floor and down to the sewer also on the reef bot what we get is a 0 to 10 volt input connection this will probably be when they start taking advantage of a doser I believe they do have a doser that they are currently testing and working on so that way it works with the ReefBot lab 
to where you can take advantage of automatic dosing and then you also get an ethernet port on the back of the system as well the light around this is a status light this light tells you what is going on with the device itself so I printed myself off a cheat sheet so I can always tell what's going on with this device for when I need it. This covers my setup and how I integrated the ReefBot Lab to work in conjunction with my GHL Proflux 4. This can also be done in the same way with any other aquarium controller as well like the Neptune Systems Apex or Hydros. Other things I have heard when speaking with Reef Kinetics support is that there should be an integration with Apex and Hydros in the near future. And another thing that I like to point out about the ReefBot Lab as well is that they do not recommend the sample line to extend two meters. The reason for that is because when a test is performed, it flushes the testing chamber three times. I watched this and it appears to be around 30 ml that it will normally flush from the sample line so that way it's able to pull in good tank water for each test that it runs. I ran the sample line through a measurement calculator of how much fluid should be in that line and the amount of times that the ReefBot lab flushes I can see why they recommend not to exceed the sample line to be more than two meters. If you choose to extend your sample line more than two meters you're going to risk the tests not being accurate so just keep that in mind. But overall it has been a great working device the only issues I've had running it is pretty much all user error from my side. I've been running this thing now for six, seven months, and it just, it just works. The only complaint I have is it's loud. This thing runs kind of like on the same type of system of what a 3D printer would. It ran on a lead screw system and a lot of the parts internal to the device are 3D printed parts as well. But overall, it has been a very great device and a great asset to help save me time from doing manual testing on my reef. So if you're thinking about picking one of these up, definitely recommend it. And hopefully the way I set this up will give you a different perspective of how this device can be hooked up and ran as well even though out of the box it's more designed to be put next to your aquarium but for me the thing's pretty big so I didn't want it taking the rest of the space inside of my sump area of my water box well guys I think that's going to conclude today's video if this video helped you out Please don't forget to like, subscribe. It really helps me out. And if you're on Discord, be sure to check out our Discord uh, support group. You can find a link for that down below in the description of this video. Until the next one, guys, I'm out. Peace.